Hello and good morning, it's Phil Thatch, and today I am at the Chickamauga Lake, just upriver from the Chickamauga Dam, and today I'm going to make some long exposure shots of the Chickamauga Dam, and I'm using a camera from way in my past. This is the Nikon D800. This is the first of the high resolution cameras. You know, there was the D810 after this and the D850 that was hugely popular before they went to mirrorless high resolution cameras like the Z7 and the Z8 and the Z9. But I'm using this old camera. It came out in 2012. I bought this camera new in 2014. I paid $3,000 for it, which is the most expensive camera body I've ever bought. What happened with this camera, and I love this camera, but what happened with it, I was at Epcot and the strap came undone on my camera bag that was over my shoulder and the camera fell. I had this same lens on it, the 24 to 70 f 2.8. The camera fell and hit the concrete there at Epcot, and it broke the camera right here and right here. This back piece, which is kind of separate from the main part of the body, was flapping open. And I actually have it glued back together with super glue right here and right here. And at that point, that's when I realized how easy it is to totally destroy an expensive camera, and I started buying the medium price cameras like D750, Z6, R6, the the, the lower resolution nice uh, full frame camera instead of the higher resolution nice full frame camera. Really love this camera. It still works fine even though it's kind of busted. Um, it's not a fast camera. I think it only shoots four or maybe four and a half frames per second. But with its 36 me megapixels, it's still a really nice camera for landscape photography. Its one problem is the screen, not only does it not flip, it doesn't even tilt. So if you're shooting from way down low, it's hard to see the screen. And if you're shooting from way up high over your head, it's hard to see the screen. But today I'm going to concentrate on shots where the camera's almost at eye level so I can work in live view from the back screen and see everything perfectly well. I'm going to make three shots of the Chickamauga Dam, 70 millimeters, F8, and 30 seconds each. What I do is I get my focus set up and get my target set up in terms of where I want to start my panorama. And once that's done, I put my 10-stop neutral density filter on it. I've got it, I've got it figured out to where my settings expose properly, 30 seconds F8, ISO 100 with the 10-stop. I put the filter on, make one shot, take the filter off, line up my second shot, put the filter back on, make my second shot, take the filter off, line the third shot up, put the filter on and make it, and then I'll take those three shots home and stitch them together in Lightroom. Okay, here we are in Lightroom, and this is the first panorama shot. And as you can see, it's only 3,333 pixels tall, but it's 12,660 pixels wide, and it is just beautiful. Let's look at it 100%. I like to look right here in this powerhouse area, and you can see there's lots and lots of detail here in this 70 millimeter shot, and the I love the way the water looks with the reflections. This 30 second shot made the water look really nice with the reflections of the cranes and all the other parts of the dam. So I was really happy with this first panorama. The settings on it are just like I described in the field, F8 ISO 100, 30 seconds with the Maven 10 stop neutral density filter. Now I'm making the exact same shot except for instead of three 70 millimeter shots to stitch. I'm making one shot at 24 that should have everything in it as well. This is the single shot, which I was able to get the entire dam in, and actually it's even wider than my panorama was, but it's much less detail. There's 100%, and when you zoom in closer to this, you can see that there's less detail in this area and all areas, but you can make a single shot and this one is 2,161 pixels tall and 7,360 pixels wide. And I, the other one, the last one was 12,000 pixels wide. So much more detail, even though this one is, this one has many more pixels, even though it's less wide overall. But I like the way both of them turned out. I really like the look of this water in the 30 second shot. I've come back a little bit further away, probably I don't know, 40 or 50 yards further back 
And now I'm right up actually at the parking lot. You can see the car I'm driving parked right over there. But from here, it's there's like a park, by the way. The Tennessee Valley Authority, who is in charge of this whole thing, has a park uh, just upriver. There's another park downriver of the dam. And I like this tree right here, right there. I like that tree quite a bit. And I made, first I made a panorama again from here. No, I'm not using a, uh, a filter this time. I'm not trying to slick the water. The water's pretty slick even without a long exposure. But I made a panorama and then I got to thinking, you know, this is the situation where my, one might need a nodal rail to, um, to have everything light up. When you have something in the foreground and something way in the background of your panorama, that's when you need a nodal rail. If it's just all background, you don't need a nodal rail as much. So just in case, and I don't have a nodal rail, obviously my, my uh, setup is not correctly, you know, it would be centered about right here probably to do a panorama correctly if there's a foreground interest. And I'm not set up for that. So just in case that panorama doesn't stitch well, I also did a wide shot of the entire scene. So we'll look at one or maybe both of those right now. The panorama did end up stitching, so I didn't have to use the single shot. And I'm going to fall in love with this tree right here as the day progresses. Overall, I'm not thrilled with this shot, but I did want to show it to you, seeing as how I, I did talk about it in the field. And this one was at 1 60th of a second. And you can see the water's pretty slick, even without a super long exposure. I am quite fond of this tree, and I've decided to make another photograph of it but I wanted to get a lower angle on it. And I promised you at the beginning of the video that I was gonna do all head level shots, but artistically that wasn't working for me. So I had to lower the old D800 down quite a bit. And in order for me to see the screen, I had to sit down in this wet grass, but I think it might be worth it. Here's my first tree shot. This one is 34 millimeters, one one hundredth of a second F8, no neutral density filter on this one. I love that tree. And the main reason why I wanted to get low was I wanted to have these branches, the bottom branches, the higher up I was, the further down in the shot these branches were. So that's why I tried to get low. I love this tree and I've made another shot of it, this time at 24 millimeters and I've gotten even lower to get the shot and I'm not sure which of these will be my favorite but I'll tell you a little later when I'm actually displaying the pictures and when I moved even closer to the tree and got a little bit lower and shot a little bit wider 24 millimeters now the branches are not running into anything and this is kind of the look I was going for but I didn't have as much I thought the clouds were really beautiful so I thought, I wonder if I can improve on that. I can't stop working on this tree. I just love this thing. And I kept working to try to get my composition like I envisioned it. And I wasn't able to get it. And then I realized, hey, you know, I've got my ultra wide lens in the bag. So I switched to the bulbous 14 to 24 F 2.8 lens. Another fantastic F mount lens that I brought with me today and shot it at 14 millimeters and I think I think I may have finally got what I want this is the 14 millimeter shot still 1 100th f8 ISO 100 and I've actually moved I was kind of shooting in that direction now I'm shooting in this direction um, the background changed if, if I stayed shooting the direction I was shooting there was a tree to the right that was going to be in my shot and I just love the way this shot turned out my only complaint about this picture is because my camera is angled upward, that makes things that should be vertical, that makes them lean in. Like this garbage can is leaning in slightly, and you can see things on this side of the frame are also leaning in in this direction where the garbage can is leaning in this direction. This would be another area where a really wide tilt shift lens might be really awesome. There's a little bit better light on the dam now, I noticed as I finished up working on my tree over there. So I came over here and made another panorama. This is the final panorama of the day. And other than the fact that it was getting so bright, I only shot four seconds instead of 30 seconds. I really love this shot. The four second part of it 
cause these reflections to not be as perfect or as good as the other ones, but I just love the detail of this one, and I love the light on the dam that was missing from before. And let's see what the resolution of this one is. It's 13,233 by 3532. So with all that resolution, as I zoom in to 100%, you can read Dangerous Waters here. You can see the this is Highway 153 going across this bridge and the sign saying that this is Chickamauga Lake, the Tennessee River, and the bridge is called the Wilts T. Thrasher Bridge. And you can see the bridge going up. And right here, this section of the dam is the powerhouse. This is where the turbines are. And uh, on the other side of the bridge, I often do bird photography. And here is, let's see, here's a power pole, a uh, big power tower. And right here, this area just above the little hand, that's an osprey nest. And as those power lines go across the river, on the other side of the river, right here, the next power tower has another osprey nest. So there's two breeding pairs of osprey right here at the Chickamauga Dam. And again, this is the powerhouse area. In this next area, from here all the way to here, these are spillways. So if they need to let water go over the dam really quickly, they open up these spillways and it makes waterfalls on the other side of the dam. Now this next area, this is the lock and they're working on the lock. They've been working on this lock for years and years and there's cranes upriver and cranes downriver where they're making a new lock. Because right now the lock will only fit uh, I think one or maybe two barges at a time, and they're going to try to uh, fit maybe six barges at a time with the new redud lock. But they are not finished with it yet, and I don't think they're going to be finished with it for quite some time, but they are definitely working on it. But really nice to see all the detail in this shot. I, I like the way it turned out. I'm happy with it. The Chickamauga Dam on the Tennessee River. I think I may do this again sometime. This has been a lot of fun this morning shooting with this old camera. You know, it's not a modern powerhouse with all sorts of computerized features, but it's still a powerhouse. It's 36 megapixel sensor is fantastic. And for landscape photography, as long as you don't mind getting down low instead of using a tilty screen, it works really, really well. And I have lots of great lenses for it. I still have all three of the Holy Trinity lenses for this camera, the the 14 to 24 2.8, the 24 to 70 2.8, those two lenses I use today. And also at home, I have the 70 to 200 2.8, which were, you know, the best zooms you could get for this camera when it was new. And I still have them all. So I can get out and shoot with this and, and kind of enjoy it for a little change of pace from my newer, more modern cameras. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, take a moment. Where's my thumb? Reach down and give me a thumbs up. That really helps me out a lot. If you want to see some more stuff like this, subscribe and hit the bell. And as always, I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Say bye, D800. Bye-bye.